If you're like me and you tend to do first and then read the instructions later, then this video is for you. I'm sure throwing a bunch of seeds in a nice sunny spot and hoping that an epic gardening patch miraculously springs up would be amazing. In truth though, that'll never happen. All the plants we grow from the carrots in the ground to the cherry tomatoes up above all have a specific set of requirements and steps to take to get from seed to a viable harvest. Luckily for us, most of the seed packets of most of our favorite crops contain most of the information that we need to grow these crops successfully, mostly. So today, let's go through all the information that you need to gather from a well-written seed packet to successfully cultivate the potential crop inside. Seeds really are the most amazing things. Tiny packages of potential new plants patiently lying dormant, just waiting for the right conditions to spring to life. While the different envelopes that they come in vary from company to company, the information given and the instructions provided are fairly universal. But let's quickly go over the front of the package as quite likely that's what you're gonna see first. Right off the bat, you're gonna see a pretty picture of either the finished fruit, the foliage, or the flowers. It all depends on the plant. This is the advertisement. This is the cell that's gonna let you know what the finished product is supposed to look like. Other useful information that may be on the front of the package could be things like plant type, along with the specific variety, the price, the weight or the number of seeds inside, and finally, the lot number and date used for tracking recalls. For larger, more expensive packages, you may see on the front also a short description, but that's often on the back instead as the front is valuable real estate for pretty imagery, not walls of text. So let's get into the real information normally found on the back of the package. In my experience, there are eight important things that I look for in a seed packet to help me successfully cultivate that crop. Right away, I look for a hardiness zone map or at least a regional suggestion letting me know whether or not my climate is even suitable for this crop. Usually, I'll do my research on a crop first and then I'll search out my seeds to buy, but it's still nice to have and confirm that I can indeed grow this plant in my area. Seed packets are usually stocked in stores for their appropriate local zone, but if you're buying your seeds online, obviously that's not going to apply. Next thing I look for is the sowing date. When do the seeds actually need to be planted? In the spring? In the fall? Or maybe a specific time frame based on your first or last frost dates? Planting your seeds at the right time of year is probably the single most important barrier to your crop success. Number three is sowing depth. How deep or shallow do these seeds need to be planted? Getting that correct planting depth greatly affects your germination rates. And planting at the wrong depth puts unnecessary stress on the young seedling's life, even if it does germinate successfully. The next item is key, and that's plant spacing. Usually it's listed twice on the package, both as a measure of sowing density, as well as suggested adult plant spacing. If the information given is just a number, chances are they mean just the distance between plants for that corresponding stage or age of the plant. The fifth piece of information that I look for is soil type. It'll raise questions like, do I need to change the soil type in my garden just to accommodate this particular crop? Or should I be adding amendments to the soil to meet this crop's particular set of needs? Often also included with soil type, they'll include the drainage requirements. These are nice to have as well. Next, we have sun exposure. This is the amount of direct daylight that the plants will require to grow properly to maturity. Does the plant need full sun or will it tolerate some shade? Knowing these requirements ahead of time is also gonna inform you where to plant these seeds in your garden for the best chance at their success. Number seven is days to germination. That is, how long does it take the seed to sprout after you plant it? This is very useful because it lets you know when you can start to expect to see the new seedlings appear. 
It's usually given in a range of days or weeks as seed sprouting time is directly correlated to the soil temperatures. The warmer it is, the faster your seeds are gonna sprout. Lastly, we have days to harvest or days to maturity. That is how long it takes the seed to fully grow into the final harvestable crop. Now, the frustrating issue with days to maturity is that not all companies list it from the same starting point. Not to mention, even within the same company, not all plants are listed the same either. For instance, while a watermelon may be listed at 60 days to maturity from a well-started plant, your carrots may be listed at 60 days to maturity from the dried unplanted seed. And further yet, your beets may also be listed at 60 days, but this time from the day of germination to harvest. So are we confused yet? Don't worry, you're not alone, we all are. However, the information can still be useful. Just remember what the seed package is claiming as the actual start date and then work forward from there. While those eight pieces of information will definitely get you and your seeds underway this year, there are other tidbits of information that are often included on that seed package that are very helpful. Things such as direct sowing versus early indoor planting, adult plant size, and whether trellising or staking will be needed. Maybe definitely don't throw those seed packets out after you finish planting, as they might contain useful information as your crops continue to grow. If that feels like information overload and you're struggling to retain any of it, now is the perfect time for a pop quiz. Just kidding. Here's the too long didn't watch 45 second obligatory recap. Seed packets contain useful information, both on the front and the back. Information about the plant itself, variety, quantity, and a picture of the mature crop is usually on the front. Normally, planting information is included on the back, and I look for eight key things. Regional suitability, sowing dates, planting depth, spacing, required soil type, preferred sun exposure, days to germination, and finally, days to harvest. So there you go. Everything you ever wanted to know about seed packets. Or maybe everything you didn't want to know. Meh, it's too late anyway. We can't unlearn it. But hey, if you have any other seed packet deciphering information that you'd like to share with the community, leave it in the comments down below. Also, if any of you are on Facebook, head on over and join our gardening group called Growing Better. The group has grown phenomenally fast, yet it will never lose its sense of community or its welcoming feel. If you're passionate about growing epic organic fruits, herbs, and veggies for you and your family, the Growing Better group is a great place to hang out, share, learn, and grow. Hey, thanks for watching, guys. If you're getting value in this and the other series that I'm doing on YouTube, hit those like, share, and subscribe buttons if you'd be so kind, and I'll see you in the next video.